It's funny, you know, you always wonder what the will of God for your life is. And it tells us in the Bible, he says, that, and this is the will of God for you, that you give thanks in all things. And I believe that's true. And I want to um, start this morning um, by putting up John 15, verse 11. And I think you'll say thank you uh, when you see this in John 15, 11. It says, these things I have spoken to you. And this mic keeps on wanting to fall off. I don't know why. Um, these things have I spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy might be full. You know, this whole series that we're talking about, Abide, um, it, to me, it's, it, in my heart, it's been one of the most uh, exciting series or things that I've got to speak to you about, series, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yet it's almost been, for me, the most frustrated series. As in, like, what I wanted to say, it just seemed like it's been so hard to get out. And so, I'm going to ask you this morning, because you see that you're here this morning, um, and what we're talking about is, is your joy. See this right here? We're talking about all of John 15, especially the beginning part of John 15, and you and I getting what he's saying here has everything to do with us and our joy being full. Anybody want their joy full? I want my joy full. So I, I just as gravity or, or rain doesn't just fall from heaven, gravity pulls it. I'm asking you this morning, pull from what, what is on the inside, not just even what's up here, but what the Lord would say to you. And then also this, don't listen to me. Listen to the Spirit of God. He's the one that's our teacher. He's the one that's bringing uh, God's Word to you right for where it fits, that sweet spot. Amen? So this is so cool. I love this. And when you see this it, it, in verse 11, it makes you going to go back and go, what is he saying to me in these first 10 verses that he says, I'm telling you these things. I've spoken these things to you. You want to hear God speak? He said he spoke it. And he read, read right back from the first 10 verses. He spoke it to you that, your joy, that my, his joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. How many of you know that God's greatest joy um, for you is, has nothing to do with... Uh, how many of you have ever heard this scripture? Uh, he, and I know I'm going to be kind of off my notes. We're going to jump back to it here in a second. But Hebrews 11, 6. Now without faith, it's impossible to please God. You've heard that. Anybody heard that? Raise your hand if you heard that. All right. Um, and so sometimes you may have heard it like this. Faith pleases God. But faith does not please God. Let me tell you. I mean, you heard that right here. Faith does not please God. Let me tell you, for, for us to preach that faith pleases God is like saying this. You, anybody have sugar cookies coming up? Anybody excited about sugar cookies? Uh, this, this is not, this, this shirt, this is not my muscles. It just makes my muscles look big, all right? I forgot that this is like, you know, look, makes me look really muscular. But uh, sugar cookies are coming up, right? And it keeps on wanting to fall down. But sugar cookies are coming up. Anybody excited about that? Decorating sugar cookies, decorating their uh, holiday cookies. And, um, but so to say faith is like, uh, or faith pleases God is like, if you like sugar cookies, you're like, yeah. Um, it's like saying sugar pleases God. If you like sugar or sugar pleases you, sugar doesn't please you, sugar cookies please you. What pleases God is not your faith, it's your faith which allows the, what, God, what pleases God to be produced in your life. What pleases God in your life is for, you, for your joy to be full, for fruit to be all over in your life. That's what pleases God. What pleases God is, is, but he has to work with something. He has to work with that faith. And so he, we're going to look at how he wants to get us all what we need. He wants to give us all the ingredients so that our joy would be full. Because how many of you know, if, it, it, the ultimate is the sugar cookie, not just the sugar. But you can't have the sugar cookie without the sugar. You know what I'm saying? And so God, faith doesn't please God. What pleases God is the fullness of who he is in your life. And you're only going to see that through faith. Just like you won't have a sugar cookie with flour, eggs, butter, milk. You need something called sugar. And then it makes it all good. It makes it right. So turn with me, if you will. We're going to pick up kind of last week. I didn't feel like I communicated everything that I wanted to in the last half of the message. And so we're going to pick up there. And so the title is actually together. Remember last night it was from the, in, last week it was from the inside out. But we're going to, we're going to say this, from the inside, let it out. How many of you know, uh, we, last week we were talking about from the inside out, there's, we were talking about our heart, our heart and how, um, if, you, if you read in John 15, and we're going to be doing that here in a second, but you read in John, he's talking about I am the vine, you're the branches, and so we're talking about how a, a, a vine, or you and I, we have something on the inside of us, just like a, as a vine does, and it's, a, it's where a flow is to be coming. There's to be a flow, just put up a diagram, I have a diagram that, that we, we drew up for you guys because the whiteboard wasn't that great, 
um, last week, but isn't that good? <laughs> that is so good. Uh, and, and you know why? Because uh, we drew this because we wanted you to for sure understand that where you draw from, what, what, what you're looking for is not found out in the sky. It's not found outside. It's not found in a vehicle. It's not found in, in a, a big buck. Or, or it's not found in, I always use that because, you know, my, I went hunting this week and I didn't get a big buck, but my joy is just as full as it was before I went. Actually, it's more full. And uh, anyway, I so, said, but it's not found out there, and, but it's found from, from, from down in the root. And so there's a drawing that comes from the roots up and out. And there should always be those arrows. You see that? It's, it, God is always trying to get something to us. See those brown? Okay. He's trying to get something to us so that he can get something out, up and through us. Out of our, and not only does it need to be come to us, it needs to be in us. You can see as it's in the green plant. But then there's something that should be coming out of us. Because that is the fullness of God in your life. Is when there's this flow. And we talked about the heart. And when a heart gets hard is when the flow stops. And we were talking about our heart condition, and so many times our heart has gotten hard. And I was, uh, I was telling you that last week, uh, as I was getting ready, the Lord was saying that my heart is hard. My heart has gotten hard. And, and, and I was just like, well, what about that? What, what are the symptoms of a hard heart? I'd say the number one symptom of a hard heart is stop a flow. There's no flow. I know that maybe a lot of you this morning have been in church a long time. Maybe you grew up in church, and, um, uh, and maybe you know the Lord, and and things maybe not, aren't just going so great in your life, but you're not, you know enough to not talk all the bad stuff, but there's no flow on the good stuff. There's no flow. And so your heart is, it, it grows hard, and, and God can't get to you and through you what He wants to produce, and He wants to produce some good stuff in your life. We're going to see that here in a minute. He wants you to be so excited. We saw in verse 11 that He wants your joy he wants your joy full. Put up uh, Proverbs 4.23, a New American Standard Version. It says, watch over your heart. We talk about your heart. Where it's that flow, that, that inner part of who you are. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of your life. There's to be a flow at all times. If there's no flow, uh, you, it, you get your heart's getting hard. There should be something coming out. And I'm asking you, what is it that's to be coming out? It says, from the inside, let it out. All right, let, let, turn with me, if you will, to, or, or follow along uh, on, uh, um, to John 15. We're going to start in verse 4. John 15, he, I mean, he, he, how many of you know that when we have a heart condition, a hard heart, anything that has a heart condition will not realize its full potential? God created you for some amazing things. God, a plant, if it has a heart issue, if something is going on in the, in the heart of that plant, it will not be what it could be. Have you ever seen a tree that, that's been planted by a river? We were just over in Oklahoma, and I'm reminded of along the Arkansas River. Uh, we, we, we took a walk one, uh, one time. We were pig hunting, and there was a cottonwood tree, a cottonwood tree like I've never seen before. And then there was other ones that were there, but they were laid over, and their centers were hollow. I'm talking this big as it was laid over. I mean, huge. And then there were some of them that were just probably four or five guys to get your hands around. I've never seen trees like this. But some of them became what they could, could be, and they are still growing. But other ones that had a hollow heart, where the flow stopped, and mush began to happen. You know, at any time there's not a flow out, there's a flow in. As long as the stuff on the outside, all the problems, all the junk that's going on begins to flow into your heart, man, things are going to get soggy. Things are going to get soft. Things are going to get bitter. Things are going to get rotten. You're, you're not going to like how life is because it's your heart that everything flows from. If there's not a flow out, then guess what? There's a flow in. And I don't care. There's either one or the other. It's like... Uh, you need, and sometimes it would be good for uh, the church or for, for, to, to tell us, hey, guess what? Your heart is getting hard. I wish you were either hot or cold, not lukewarm. At least then you'd know, you know, that, that, hey, I've got to get something going here. Something's got to be producing. And I wonder why I'm not liking how life is. Because life, frankly, just is not what I want. And you might use a different adjective uh, to, right there, but life is not that great right now. Matter of fact, it, it's kind of stinky. But here you see in, in John 15, uh, 4 through 5, or uh, excuse me, 4 through 8, we're going to read this. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. 
neither can you unless you abide in me. And so he's just saying remaining, okay? He's saying continually, being constant in him. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, I and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Remember the diagram? You're to be drawing what you're looking for from him. It's found in him. It's found, look down. Don't look out. Look within. All right? Something, something, a heart condition. Let me tell you, if if what's on the outside is not what you want, it's a heart condition. Look down. Look what's going on. Go on to verse 6. It says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. Have you ever seen a tree just drop a branch? You know, in the winds and stuff? It, It just... It's not that God cut it off, it's just that it just flat out dried up. And and I think that many times that happens with us and the plan of God for our lives is we just fall off the vine. We just fall off of Him because there's just no flow. And if there's a a strong enough wind or a strong enough storm in our life, a a great enough opposition, you know, that that it's going to fall. It's going to fall. Big breaks. I mean... And, and, and I don't think God wants us to cast, uh, we should be cast forth. We're the branches. He doesn't want us to, to fall off of his plan for our lives. As a matter of fact, he so, he so loves us that he says, I know the plans I have for you, and I desire to, to perform them in your life. And that's what he's talking about here, about getting his plan. And you know what? His plan for you is good. I just find this interesting. John 15, we kind of talked about this if you weren't here a couple other weeks. John 15 right here, this is Jesus talking like his last pep talk to the disciples. I find it interesting this, that Jesus, or the Lord, started in a garden. Remember? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He placed Adam in the garden. Remember? Okay, and then he's ending in the garden, in a garden. He's in, in a garden, and he's at a, a, a vineyard saying, these are the vines, these are the branches, this is what's going on. And then he says, not only do I want you to start, start in a garden, that was my plan all along, not only am I saying, hey, well, I'm going to end in a garden because this is my plan, I want you to remain in a place that you're continually drawing from me. And you only will be able to draw from him in this one understanding, and this is so foundational, is that his God is good. He even just says that he started out in John 15, 11, that he wants your joy full. God doesn't want you to be happy. Tell me what died before Adam sinned and Adam and Eve ate off the tree. Tell me what junk was going on. Tell me what was going on that wasn't good. What died? Was there a plant that died? Was there anything that was evil at all? Anything. Did, did Adam lose his mom? Did Adam lose his kids? I mean, was, was there stuff going on that was bad? Did did God say, um, you know what, that's good enough when he created something? Or did he create it and then he say, nope, 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 now it's good. As a matter of fact, he created something that was pretty good. And he said, but it's not all the way good. It's not good that you would be alone, Adam. I'm going to create you a helpmate. So he's always for our good. And not only did he start in the garden... Here he's, he's, now he's ending in the garden, and he's saying, abide in me, abide in me, abide in me, abide in me. How many times can you say abide, or continue, or remain? It it almost gets so wordy, you're going, what are you talking about? He's just saying, don't leave the garden. Don't leave, not even this idea, but the fact that he is good, and the goodness that you're looking for is not found outside the garden. It's found connected in the garden, planted, and connected to him. And we are chasing around. The Bible says in Matthew 6 that we're looking, we're running to and fro, seeking all these things. But guys, he said he wants to add them to us. Hey, funny story. Um, Kind of a squirrel, but I think it will fit. Uh, Last night we were on our way home, and... uh, Pulling in our driveway, and uh, last week we're going to be there and uh, on the field of food plot, and here's all these deer. And uh, one of them, so we're like, oh, there's, you know, six, seven, eight, you know, and the kids, you know, we're all counting them. And, and I'm like, oh, did you guys see that one laying down? And, and they're like, where? And I'm like, here, pull out in the field, right there. And uh, it was laying down, and it didn't get up, it was a little buck, and it must have been a, a doe in the area that was, he wasn't going to leave. And um, the boy said, I wonder why he's laying down. And Caleb said, he's probably laying an egg. <laughs> we were laughing. He's so used to my chickens, if you know anything about chicken. Um, probably laying an egg. And he's four, so it's, but he said, he's probably laying an egg because he didn't get up, you know. And so then we just kept on, and we got pretty close, and he just 
laying there, you know, and he's probably laying an egg. And, and, and sometimes that's what happens in our life. We just lay eggs all the time because there's nothing coming up and out of us. It's just kind of like, Meh, you know. <laughs> so there, I tied it together. How's that? All right. But next time you see a deer laying down, you probably could tell your friends because, you know, out of the mouth of babes, right? Um, he's probably laying an egg. <laughs> so deer eggs. Oh, and then yesterday, are we coming back? Have you ever seen those things, rattlesnake eggs, in the gas stations or anything? It's, it says rattlesnake eggs. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, so I was in, uh, in Oklahoma at a casino. Not at the casino, but just filling up at the casino. And, um, and uh, anyway, so I'm at that gas station, and, and there's this thing. It says rattlesnake eggs at the checkout. You know, and then it says, anytime they put a warning on there, like not for under age 12, I thought, what in the heck is that, you know? So you pick it up, and I open it up, and the thing, like, exploded like a rattlesnake. Anyway, and, ah, you know, anyway. All right, back. I don't know how we got on the eggs. That's how, rattlesnake eggs, eggs, see? There's a, there is always a trail, all right? Let's back up. Um, but he doesn't want you to stop short. He wants you to, to, to have what he created for you in the garden, and this is why he sent Jesus, and this is why he started in the garden, this is why he ended in the garden, this is why he's saying remain in the garden. He's saying, guys, don't get cut off from what he wants to do in your life. Don't do it. And we're going to talk about how that looks like. You know, give me some application here. All right? All right. Go to verse 7. He says, if you abide in me, my words, ab- uh, my word and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. How many of you know the result of being in him? is his word being in us. So if you're saying, how do I abide? Put the word of God in you. That's it. It's that simple. Just go listen to what he's saying. Pick up this. Get something. Invest in in a Bible. Invest in a devotional. Invest in something that can put the word of God in you. This is how you abide in him. This is how fruit is in your life. This right here, just by simply putting this in. If you abide in him, my words or his words will abide in you. That's the result of living, uh, being in Him. Um, and then, I love this, because this is talking about your future. How many of you w- want to hear about your future? I mean, you want to know that you can remain and, and, and have good things going on in your life. Here's what it says. If you abide in me, no, no, go back. Sorry, we're still on this verse. If you abide in me, my words will abide in you. Okay, I'm just going to say it like that, because that's what that says. And you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. You will. You will. Put it up in the, uh, go to the King James version of that, not NK, NKJV. But he says, you will. He's talking about, or if you have the King James, or if you look it up, he's saying, you shall. You will. You will. This word shall right here, he's saying, when you live in me and my words are in you, there's going to be a response. Because you can't help but have the word of God come up and out. You can't help it. And he's all about getting what, what, what he prepared for you into your life, but he can't do it, but and yet he watch over his word. And yet it be part of what his desire and his will is. And he says, you shall. This word shall is this. It, says, it speaks with strong intention, like this is what's going to happen. Well, I shall be, I shall kill a buck next week. Okay? This is my future. We're talking. Shall. Strong intention. The week of Thanksgiving old big all right that's what i'm gonna do shall i shall he's talking about your shall this is what you shall do you shall ask it says it, it, all shall also means this expresses the future tense so with 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 strong intention he's expressing your future tense he's expressing your future when you abide in him his words will abide in you and what will happen is you will ask Oh, i got to ask. He wants me to ask. You know why we don't ask? Well, last week we talked about this in Mark 6. Uh, remember when Jesus, he, he, uh, he, he multiplied the bread and the loaves and all that kind of stuff? And then he said, all right, y'all go to the other side of the lake. And a storm came up. And he went out uh, on the water and walking on the water. And the Bible says that they were standing in awe when they saw him. At first they thought he was a ghost. And then they were like, whoa, did you see Jesus? That was unbelievable, man. He like walked on the water, you know. I don't know if they were like that. Maybe not. But they were in awe. And then that's when, and and because they were in awe, because they were in awe because he walked on the water, Jesus said, why are your hearts hard? Do you forget the bread? 
Did you forget that I can take what you have that's nothing and make more than enough? Did you forget? I mean, he's saying, did you not see that? As a matter of fact, it says he, he took the, the loaves and the fishes and he blessed it and he handed it to his disciples and they gathered 12 baskets. I'm just here to say when he handed it to the disciples, they must have had 12 baskets so that they could distribute because I don't think they were doing one of these. He, he saw it. The disciples saw it. And they were asking, why did you, why are your hearts so hard? Because you've forgotten that he's good. Because you don't remember that he's great. You don't, your heart's hard. There's not, you're not, everything that you're looking for, you're looking for it from the outside. Even from the loaves and the fish. Go have them get some somewhere else. Have them go do this. But he's saying, guys, I'm enough. I'm always enough. There's nothing too hard for me. Why are, your, why are you standing at awe when I walked on the water? Why are you standing at awe when, 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 when uh, you got a bad doctor's report and, 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 and I heal your body? Why are you in awe? You should not be in awe. You should be honored. The only awe should be honored. Oh, thank you, Lord. Why? Because you're honored because you realize that He is more than capable of doing all things good. Not only is He capable and able, He's willing he just saw in verse 11 that he wants your joy full. He said that. And so he's saying this. He says, you're going to ask. He wants you to ask. He wants you, he wants you to, to, to have it come up and out of you. He wants it. I don't know how it vibrates. Anybody know that you're ever in a deer stand and it vibrates? And it, it still vibrates even though it's on silent? Anyways, it vibrated again on me. So I'm trying to get rid of the vibrations in my life. The beeps, all right? So you turn it off and you do all that and it's still, you know, I'm teaching here. Come on. Seriously. Come on. All right. That tech, what the heck knowledge, right? Technology. All right. Here we go. Seven. Abiding. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. This is what's going to happen. You shall. He's talking about your future tense. It's going to come out. And God wants that. He wants you to ask. Let me ask you this. What's the last thing you ask the Lord for? I'd venture to say, besides a big buck when you went to your deer stand, because that's every time. I'd venture to say maybe, maybe 20% of us in here in the last week have really asked the Lord for something. Not just, the Lord bless my day. No, I'm saying, what have you asked Him for? Like, you know the big things that you normally try to pick up yourself because He can't do it? Remember, because you can do all things through... You, oh no, it was, that was through him. But anyway, yeah. But you can bear fruit apart from, no wait, that's through him too. But why are we trying and why are we being frustrated and why is all of our strength that's within that we once had? Sometimes, sometimes we're in this place where we once had a lot of strength. You know, you drew from, from, you drew from him. You, oh God, you're so good and he's doing stuff in your life and there's this flow. But somehow, somewhere, we get cut off from the flow, because of problems, because of stuff, and now we use the strength that remained, and we go after trying to, uh, and then it's somehow, we just, uh, we grow weak. That's not his plan for us. His plan for us is to ask, to seek first his kingdom, and he'll have these things to us. I'm telling you, you may not want to hear that he's good, but you got to hear it today. No, he's good. Yeah, I know, but. No, don't but me. I said he's good. And you have to hear that. And you got to see that too. <laughs> That's good. All right. But here's what happens. You shall ask what you will. And then it has another shall. And it will be done for you. It shall be. He's talking about your future. You can expect this. He's saying it shall be. As sure as I'm going to get a big buck, it shall be. Be as sure as the sun rises in the morning and sets, as sure. You know why we don't believe this? Because we don't know how faithful he is. He's faithful. He's faithful. The Bible tells us that his faithfulness endures to all generation. And it says that his faithfulness extends from the ground all the way through the heavens to the depths of the earth through the heavens. His faith. He's trying to get you to understand how faithful he is. And we, we ask things many times, but what happens is we ask, and then it doesn't happen like this, and we get off of it. And he says this, and he says, he says would you hold fast to your confession? Would you hold fast to what you ask? I've got to find that, because I, I want to make sure that I'm, I, I, come, I come to that. Um, here, here. All right. Uh, hold fast. Hold fast. Uh, Hebrews 10.23. Put up there. Hebrews 10.23. 
He says, would you hold fast to the confession of your faith? Would you hold fast to it? Because I want to talk to you about his faith or his faithfulness. Hold, hold, fa- hold unswervingly to the hope we profess or the faith, what we asked for, our hope. Hold fast to that. When you, when, when you ask, because he said, when his words abide in you or you abide in him, his words will abide in you and you shall ask. It's going to be a response. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Or it says this, what a man's full of comes out. All right? And if you want to write that verse down, um, it's Luke 6.45. But it says, what a man's full of, he shall speak. And so it comes out. So then there's this profession. And so he's saying, guys, so I... I, I I told you uh, I want your joy full. So I'm telling you, abide in me, okay? And, and how do you know if you're abiding in me? It, it's that his words would be in you. So if they're going to be in me, they're going to have to be in here and in here, in here. All right? It doesn't work, all right? Um, but they're going to have to be in you. And if they're in you, what's going to happen is you're going to ask. And then as sure as you're going to ask, because cause we get to that point many times, as sure as we're going to ask, we ask. But then it's not done for us because... We let go of what we asked. But he said, but it, it shall be done for you. But so here's how it will be done for you. He says, so let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess or what we've asked. For he who promised is faithful. Let me talk to you about the faithfulness of God this morning. Just a little bit about God's faithfulness. I want you to see what he said about his faithfulness right here in, in Psalms 91 verse 4. And I think this is so important. Did you know... When all hell is breaking loose and everything's going on and just you just can't seem to make uh, the, r- the right end go up. And you know what I'm talking about? And, and you just thought you were on top and only to find out you were on the bottom. Anybody have one of those on the check- checkbooks or whatever? You thought, oh, good. And then you're like, oh, that didn't come out yet? Oh, Lord. Really? I wouldn't have spent that if I had known that. Anybody been there? Um. Here's what he talks about his faith. He says he's faithful. And so here he's talking about his faithfulness right here. And he says what his faithfulness is like to us. He says, he'll cover you with his feathers and under his wings you'll find refuge. His faithfulness will be a shield. See, when we don't know he's faithful, we have no shield to all the stuff that's going on. What, are the, what is the shield of faith for? Darts, the Bible says. Fiery darts. What are darts? Those thoughts. Am I going to have enough? How's that going to work out? What if? What if? It, then what? Then what? What about? You know who? Well, last time. You know what I'm talking about? But how do you know somebody's faithful? Time with them. In, in the, seeing who he is. Understanding this, that the God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did for them, you can expect for you. If not, why, what are, why are we even believing in Jesus? If you, if you don't believe that he is who he says he is and that he is the same yesterday and for, today and forever, yesterday, today, and forever, then, then either you believe that and you believe that he, if he's did it for somebody, he's doing it for you. It's his faithfulness. He's watching over his word to perform it. He's, he, and he talks about by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. All he's saying, by the word that I gave them and they didn't let go, I did this for them. And then, and then, you know, that person, by faith, you know, remember, I gave them a word that they're going to have a child. And, you know, I know they were 90-something years old, and I know this, I know, but by faith, I gave them a word. And they said, okay, well, I'll believe that. And then I, I did that to them, too. And then, you know, that other guy, you ever read, remember, have, you ever, have you ever read Hebrews, the heroes of faith? You know who the hero of our faith is? It's Jesus. It's the Lord. That's who the hero of our faith is, that we would stand and realize that, wait a minute, all I did is hold on to his faithfulness because his faithfulness was a shield to me. And not only that, his faithfulness is like this buckle or rampart. It's a buckler. It's what holds it all together. When everything is, ah, if you just have that clip, it's all right. We're going to keep going. You know why? Because he's faithful. So it doesn't matter what's going on because I understand he's faithful. I understand, oh, even though I walk through this valley of shadow of death, I will fear no reason. Because Why? Why? Because he's with me. Because he's with me. And he's, le- he's the one that leads me uh, beyond, uh, on still pastures or green pastures and, and still water. We have to understand he's faithful. How do we understand he's faithful? By putting the word in. I, I'm going to say it again. Well, I don't want to have another thing to do. 
You just want your joy full. You want your joy full? This is we're talking about having our joy full. And you know what? I seem like I feel frustrated, uh, almost like it, uh, again and again. It's because I'm hearing it again. You know why I'm hearing it again? And you know why you're hearing it again? Because we're not doing it. Oh, that hurt. But it's true. And it isn't until you start doing it. Because when you start doing it, stuff will start coming out of you. Let me give you an example. This, this week when I was over in Oklahoma, I get in a deer stand. I put some stuff on my boots that hopefully a big buck's going to walk in. Um, I didn't know there was cows in this new piece of property. Uh, there wasn't supposed to be any cows, but the guy had just put 10 cows in there. I go through the gate, and I thought, well, because I'm already walking on the trail, I want the deer to follow that trail. So I open the gate, and I just let it open so that he can, the deer can stay on my trail. This is my thinking, okay, hunting thinking. I didn't know there was cows. And I go walk another 400 yards into this tree. I'm in this tree line, and I got this huge field and, and woods, and, and I can see. And I'm like, no way. There's cows. Now, my experience with cows is not that great <laughs> at all. Matter of fact, it's terrible. Um, I, have one, I have one story. I got these cows, and I remember just being up in the words, woods, and it's like, and just it's so much inside of me it was like, just cuss as loud as you can. Let everybody hear it. Just say it. And I'm just wanting to just go, ah! And I had like eight or nine people there helping me chase cows, you know, and they're all like thousands of yards away and chasing, and I thought, let them all hear it, you know. But this is how cows and me have been. Matter of fact, not only that, the uh, gate got left, uh, not left open, uh, but they knocked it open, and I had uh, hay bales in my truck over there, and, um, and they, no, this, is, this side of the gate, there wasn't even, there wasn't even a gate. The, the barbed wire was down. And I come back to my truck, and they had taken hay bale, big hay bales out of my truck, 55-gallon barrels of corn, and dumped it all over the road. And there's cows sitting in the road looking at me. And I'm like, are you serious? How do I get them back on the property when they jumped a fence? Anyway, so cows, all right? Cows, not good. So I see cows, and I'm like, oh, no. And the piece of property that we're hunting, um, we have permission. We didn't even lease it. So it's like, no way. I don't want to be irresponsible in something. And do I get out of my stand? I'm like, Lord, do I get out of my stand and go shut that gate? It's like 7 o'clock. It's like prime time. So, and the Lord said, I, and I just, was just reading this, that he's given me favor with God and man. And I thought, and cows. <laughs> <laughs> and I was been reading this. He says, you, if you, my words abide in you, you'll ask. And, I saw, and so here's these cows. They come over to the, and, and the, there's the only one place that we're feeding on this property. How many of you ever seen cattle or know about cattle? When you get the feed, they come to the feed. All right? They just come. Like a cow to slot, just they come. Just all you got to do is do the feed bucket. And they try to get in this gate all the time because that's the only place that our, our Travis is feeding them. So I'm like, oh, we're going, okay, Lord, I thank you that you just don't let those cows come in here because if they come into this pasture, we're talking 200 acres of pasture and green briars and nonsense. And a whole day chasing cows, and I didn't want that. Guess where those cows did? They walked all the way to the gate. I've never seen a cow do this. Usually, if a gate's open, that means they just go through it. Just looked at the gate. I'm watching through my binoculars. Here come the rest of them, They're looking at the gate. They decide to keep walking. I was like, "Thank you, Lord." And you th and I was telling Travis, and he's like, "Are you serious?" He's like, you left that gate open? I said, I didn't know there was cows in here. He's like, yeah, I know. They just put them in here. And he said, and they didn't go through it. I have to shoo them away from that gate every time I come in here because they want to come through the feed. And I said, no, I'm sitting up there, and I saw that, and I saw big black back straps. And I was like, whoa, those are cows. And, um, and, and, and that was God's faithfulness for a cow, for me. You know why? Because he loves me. And I would normally not have asked. Many times I wouldn't have asked. I would have just been like, dang it. That was an idiot. I knew better than that. I knew I should have shut the gate. I always shut the gates. But instead, I'm up there, and because I had, had his words in me, out of me came, Lord, I'm asking you to take care of that because I missed it. I, I screwed up. I messed up. That was my bad. Matter of fact, when I went open the gate and I, I, I did that, and and I because I didn't want to make much noise and just kind of let it, I thought, oh, go get it. Go get it. And I didn't. 
I didn't. That was the Holy Spirit. But, you know, even when you miss it, God's faithful. Let's, let me go here, all right? Uh, this is, I'm, I'm just so, so, so blessed by the faithfulness of God and the fact that He loves me. And that fact, the fact of this, in 2 Timothy 2.13, He says, when I'm faith, faithless, He remains faithful. 2 Timothy 2.13, if we're faithless, this is the kind of shield that His faithfulness is to us. His shield doesn't leave us, doesn't forsake us, even when we miss it, even when we turn and go the other way, even when we just flat out blow it, and we know it because He spoke it to your heart and you still did it anyway. Here's what He says. He remains faithful because He can't deny Himself. I love that. I love that. And so God is looking to do something in us. And what He's looking to do in us is, He's looking to produce fruit in us by us asking. He says, if, my word, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. And what shall happen is, you shall have something come up from the inside and out, and you shall ask, and it shall be done. And here's why he wants it to be done. Not only in verse 11, because he wants you joyful, but if you go to verse, I, I believe it's verse 8, put up verse 8, he wants to be glorified. Not just because he's deserving of honor. But because this word, uh, put up John 15, 8. Excuse me, John 15, 8. He wants to be glorified. This is why he wants you to be, abide in him. Because if you, abide, if you abide in him, his words will abide in you. And if his words abide in you, then out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And so then you will ask, you shall ask. It's, it's talking about your future. Not only that, it shall be done for you. And he wants that so bad for you. Why? Because, because, this is the way that he is glorified. And that word glorified simply means this. He takes that high place in your life. And the reason it's so important for him to have that high place in your life is so you can see him. Because sometimes you're down here. Not only it's for you, but for others to see him. Others, but, but how many of you know sometimes you think, if I could just see him, that would be good right now. But you're going to not see him. If you're not asking, if you're not asking... It's just simply because you're not with him. Yeah, but Pastor Nate, you ever do one of these things? You know, like you really want to do it, and then you can't do it, and you try to do it, and then you don't do it, and then you're just like, sometimes you just, yeah, forget it, what's the point? Because I, I've tried with all good intentions in that moment when the Lord's talking to my heart, and he's saying, I want your joy full. Let me tell you how I want you to know me goes on to talk about knowing his love in this chapter talk about knowing it and he said i want that for you but i love this verse eight this is my father glorified he's glorified he's lifted to this high place so that you can see him so that others can see him because they see the fruit you look around and you see fruit in your lives and i i wrote this and and i i I, i'm going to read this just i wrote it so I thought it was good. You following God constantly has everything to do with you seeing God produce in your life what you couldn't. You following God constantly, that's what he's talking about. So you will be my disciples. If this was the King James, you would see that it says, so shall you be my disciples. He's saying, you will be. You won't go this way. You, what is a disciple? A follower of Christ. He said, you'll be followers of me, not of, oh, this is what happened over here. Oh, yeah, and they, they, they didn't pay on time. Oh, they filed bankruptcy on you. Had that one happen. Big numbers, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to go at, no, I'm going to follow after you. Because why? Because you're faithful. And so shall you be. My disciples, you will, you following God constantly, you being in that state of not, oh, oh, you know, you know, has everything to do with his fruit in your life, him being glorified. But only that can come about this way. When we're in his, in him, because if we're in him, in his word, his words will be in us. If his words are in us, they shall come out of us. His word shall come out of us. And only that, the Bible says, he watches over his word to perform it. He watches over it 
to perform it. Finish up. I want you to see how you've been like, like I have, where you know you try, and you, you, you try to get in the Word, but the strategy of the enemy is to give you a problem to deal with when you try to get into it. You know, because even if it's not a problem that you got to go run and tend to, it's a problem that you got to try to solve in your mind. Anybody else like me? A problem you're trying to solve in your mind, and here he's trying to get his word to you, because if he can get his word in you, then, then he can get his word out of you, and if he can get his word out of you, he can produce in you what you've been looking for all along, and if he's producing in you what you've been looking for, you won't be like this, you'll be a follower of him. And all these things are going to be going on. But we're talking about your future. This is the shall. We're talking about your future. How about that you would know that you're going to end up in the plans. He says the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. He says I have prepared good things for you to walk in. What if you knew you could walk in those things that he has for you? It all has to do with this. It's just simply going back to him. Proverbs 8, 34 through 35 says this. It says, blessed is the man. That, that, that is found at my gate seeking me. Blessed is that man. Waiting beside my doors. Daily. So creating habits. We're talking about creating habits. And you know as well as I do when we try to create habits, you know. I mean, brushing teeth can be a tough one, you know. Because you get busy. Oh, I got to run. And you ran. And st- something was burning. So you, you went and tended that. And you forgot to do the thing you always do. And, it, and then, oh, well, what about this? And what? So he's talking about watching daily at the gates. There's 35. Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor of the Lord. That's that story. I obtain favor. How many of you know the favor of God is in the will of God? There is no favor outside of the will of God. He can't, oh, yeah, let me just do that and keep them going that way lest they think that they produce that on their own and that they would grow further and further from me so we're talking about blessed is the person that does this and I, I, I know as well as you do uh, things happen life's life get busy so what's the secret Because there's got to be one there's got to be a way for me to do what I want to do in my heart you know, like Paul said, why is it that I don't do the things I want to do? Here it is. It's real simple. And I, my prayer is that if you have a phone, that you take a note today of a couple of scriptures and you put them in your phone and when you miss it, you would apply these two scriptures. Put up James 3. How many of you have ever heard us talk about this or you've read it? Right before here is talking about the bitten horse's mouth. This is in James talking about the tongue. You know, our tongue. We were talking about that this morning. Up and out. Not out the other end. We're not laying eggs. But up and out of our mouth. Talking about the tongue. And I love this. I love this. uh, It's the New American Standard Version. It says, look at the ships. Though they are so great and driven by strong winds, they're still directed by a very small rudder. Wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. I just want to ask you this. Who's the pilot of your life? Who steers your life? You do. You do. How do you steer it? Yeah, I, I, I always try and I, I just don't. I always try to do that and I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. Let me say, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. You're the... You're the rudder. So when you miss it, what if you just said, I can do that. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. What if you just changed what you said and realized that, wait a minute, I'm the pilot. No longer is this going to tell me what's going to happen and this is going to tell me what's going to happen. Nope, nope. What's in me? And me seeing his goodness and his faithfulness, because that's what ultimately will happen when you're in his word. You're going to see how good he is, how faithful he is, how he always, how he always, in always comes through. Up and out of you is going to come. This is what I choose. This is what I choose. 
and, and your words as the pilot, you're going to say this, I'm the pilot. And that's the only point I wanted to really get on this verse, is that you're the pilot. You're the pilot. Stop letting everything else steer. Stop letting stuff take you, stop letting the circumstances that you're going to give voice to take you on some scenic tour that you were never meant to see. Those are the worst. Been on vacation before? The worst. What do you do? Proverbs, the last verse, Proverbs 16, verse 3. You know what you do with your tongue as a pilot? Because you're the one that steers. If you had it in the NIV, I gave you both. They say the first word is commit, which they amplified. Commit to the Lord. Put it back up in the amplified. Commit. How do you commit? I will. Wait, wait. How do you commit? What is it? Your mouth. Your asker. I will commit. Okay? It says this. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit. Just say, Lord, because you, this is what you know to do. How many of you know what to do? How many of you know, but it just seems like sometimes you just can't? So what do you do? Because I just can't. You just give up? Do you just quit? Do you just quit on having the fruit that God desires to put in your life that only can produce from down from within and you're going to try to fill it from some other way because you're frustrated because you just can't do it even though when you try, you just fall short all the time so you just finally give up. Maybe I'm the only one that's ever been there. Just, oh, I know I need to do that. I know, I know, I know. But I don't, I don't need to because I see in verse 11, I want to. I want to. But many times I just, why do I not do the things I want to do? And I would say that your hearts want to do these things. It's not even that it's a need to, but we're saying it's a need to. But here's what he says, what you do. Commit yourself. Right here. Lord, I commit and trust wholly in you. And you know what he'll do? Lord, I commit to you. I commit to you to do what you've asked and spoke to my heart. The thing that you illuminated to me, not that Pastor Nate said, not that somebody they said, on, but what you spoke to me through them or when I was doing, and you spoke to my heart, that, I commit to that. I make a commitment. Just out of, Lord, I commit to that. And here's what he'll do. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will and so shall your plans be established and succeed. I'm telling you guys, it's time. This is God's best for us to get what he has in us up and out of us because only when it's coming in us he says this is what's going to happen you abide in me my words will abide in you and I'm talking about what's going to happen you will speak you will ask and I will do and you will continue to follow me and I will be glorified and everyone will see and so will you and in then and only then it goes on to say well you know the fullness of my love so what if I could do that because it seems like I always can't well, I recognize that I'm the pilot. I'm the pilot. Not only am I the pilot, and I have, the, I have control of this, this is what I do. I see that I'm a pilot, and I know how to now set my course. I set my course by doing this. I commit myself to you, Father. Let's do that. Let's stand just this morning. I know we got some more stuff to do, but let's do that. Let's, I just saw that in my heart. Let's commit ourselves to him this morning. And he will do this. He will even make our thoughts well, it's hard. No, he'll make our thoughts agreeable to him. Oh, it's such a blessing. It's so easy. It's so wonderful to be with you. Father, this morning, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We give you our hearts. And as the pilot of our lives, we see that you have plans, a course that's been laid out before us, that we're to take. And so this morning we commit with our mouth, say it, I commit to your plans, to what you say to me. Because what you say to me is for my joy. Thank you for making my thoughts agreeable to yours and making me able to do in Jesus name Amen while you're still standing if you're here this morning you've never met Jesus or you're, you're just like oh, man I've just been so far off from left field I just need to I need to know him like I like I haven't 
every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, the Lord has you here, and he had you here because he wants your joy full. And the only way that can happen is when you're connected to him. And so I just, if that's you this morning, I want you to reconnect. If I'm talking to you this morning, you know in your heart, if I'm talking to you, that you're supposed to reconnect. I want you to, or connect for the first time. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you to lift your hand and be bold about it. Don't be bashful. He had you here for a reason. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, you can put your hands down. The Bible says all you have to do is come to Him. So that's what we're going to do this morning. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, you'd be saved. Sometimes when we feel afar off, it's just because we haven't called him Lord in a while. So we're gonna do that this morning. Bow your head, close your eyes. If you want to pray this with us, you're more than welcome to, but just say this. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus, for making a way that I can come to you, that I can call you Lord. I do that today. I call you my Lord my Savior. Thank you for making a way and continuing to make ways when I don't see any. You're so good to me. I love you. I commit my heart to you. Produce in me a hunger like never before. I desire you today. Thank you for finishing the work that you started in my heart. Jesus' name.